Welcome back, guys. So today we want to just have a quick run through of Swagger, how it ties into our API development and what its purpose is. So Swagger really is there to help simplify API development for users, teams and enterprises. It's an open source tool set and it basically helps us to design and document our database with much less effort than it would really take to have this level of detail. So it's a really good tool. It helps us to automate a lot of things. And the best part of it all is that it is already included with our API. So in previous versions, we would have to go and install it. Granted, it wasn't a very difficult process, but now that it, Microsoft has seen that it is kind of a standard that everybody with an API wants to put in Swagger because it's so cool, so efficient at everything it's doing, then what they've done is they've actually just started packaging it in our API for us. So the main libraries that allow Swagger to be integrated, well, one, it comes from this NuGet package. So if I go to manage NuGet package, we'll see that we have the package already installed for swashbuckle.aspnet core, all right? Gives us the Swagger tools. Then in our startup, so remember that program.cs calls the startup. So startup is now where we define all the middlewares and the one that we have in the services for Swagger is services.addswaggergen. We put in, well, not we, either way, if we were doing it manually, we would have to do this. But because it was generated, once again, we don't have that step. So it will generate the Swagger document. It supports versioning. So if you have version one, version two, et cetera, of your API, you're able to keep track of the versions or at least let whoever is reading documentation know which version of the API they're looking at. You can define certain open API information, the, this, the title, the version. If I click comma here, you'll see that you can add contact information. You can add a description, license, all sorts of things to your documents. So somebody looking at your API documentation knows exactly who, if you want to provide that level of detail and what this API is about. Later on, or further down rather, in the configure section, we have the use Swagger and app.useSwagger UI. So the Swagger UI means it will create its own endpoint. It will have its own kind of configuration file and it will call itself hotel listing V1. Now, right now, this is under the env.is development. So env is just a variable that allows us to track which environment we're in. Are we in development? Are we in production? Right now, anything that goes in here is going, it's basically saying we're in development. So when we publish this to say Azure or IIS or, you know, to the internet, whatever it is, or wherever it is, we put it, don't do any of this stuff. That's what this if statement basically says. Now, I think Swagger is useful. So while they may have put it in the development part, which I understand, I think that it's easier to just include it in the API at all times so that when I publish my API, I don't have to provide as much technical support to somebody else to teach them how to use the API because that's what Swagger documentation is for. So I'm going to just take these two lines out of that if statement and place them in the general area where everything else is going to get done regardless of the environment. So that's my modification. Once again, context is everything. I can understand that for security reasons or just general no, uh, lack of need for information exchange. They probably said, well, you only look at it in a development setting because the developers may be internal, but then if it's for third party developers, then I'm going to make it external and publicly accessible. So let's take a look at one of our controllers and well, the controller that we have. And you see here, it gives us the weather forecast and it defines a get method. All right, now if I run the application and the web page comes up, we're seeing our swag, Swagger documents. 
All right. So hotel listing version one, all of those were things defined in the startup. So if you need to change the name or make it a bit more appealing, you know, user friendly, human readable, you can always change it inside of the configuration areas here and here. All right. There it is. Title. So if you want to add description, you add description, it will come up on the page. Now here it is showing us what is in the API and what's in the API would be our endpoint to get, right? Going back to the controller, get weather forecast, all right? So it's contextually generating this document based on what it sees in the project. And when you click that, it will show you examples of what is going to come back when you try to retrieve anything, which is exactly right because this is returning a list of weather forecast and weather forecast here is a, is a class that has some data fields defined and each one has a date data type. So date, time, int, int, and string. So you see if Swagger is actually taking all of them, see, date, it's showing you you're going to get back a field called date. Temperature C, temperature F, and summary. It's going to show you all of them. And it is even giving you an idea of the data type. This is a date, time, int, int, and a string. So I'm just showing you how powerful Swagger is without any effort on our part to already have API documentation, which once again is very important when you are going to be building a client application consuming an API, or if you are the one building the API, you make it easy for somebody who has to consume it. So the same way you'd want to be treated as a consumer of somebody's API to have all the information you need to know how to build around it, you want to make sure you provide that information to persons interacting with yours. So Swagger makes it out of the box very easy. And just to push the envelope a bit, when we go to try it out, we can actually click execute and Swagger allows us to actually test our API right here. So these, this data that's coming back with the status code 200, we'll get into all of that later on, but you see the response body, that's because it's actually executed the code that is here. And just to prove that, if we click over in this pane, we get this red dot, which is a breakpoint. So I'm just going to click execute again. And then you see Visual Studio pauses and it hits this breakpoint. So you see now it has this yellow arrow in it and that allows us to press F11 and go line by line. So I'm not trying to show you how to debug now. I'm just showing you that this is not fluff. It actually will help us to test. So now we have two testing utilities, Swagger, and postman all right so when i press f5 or i can just click continue up top here whichever one then it will just continue with the execution and it will bring it back all right so that is how swagger helps us in our quest for testing now i'm just going to do a two for one special and let's include our logger here so up top i've already well, by default, it's injected. So because we are using serial log as a default logger, when we do logging using our object here, it will use a serial logger. So I'm just going to show you a little snippet of how logging helps. So I can say logger dot, and then I would log information to say accessed weather forecast, right? So this is just information to say, access weather forecast, and then I can say later on, weather forecast returned. Something like that, you know? It, it may not, this, this is elementary, but it's just, once again, for example's sake. So I would just say, logger, logger, oh, well, I'm sorry, I put that too far down. Here's the return statement, so, uh, all right, I'll just leave it as information for now. Later on, we'll get to experiment more when we have our own code to test with. So I'm just going to run this application once again. And then I'm going to go ahead and try it out, click execute. 
I can remove the breakpoint by just clicking. So as long as that red dot is there, it's going to stop when it gets to that line. You just remove the red dot and press F5 for it to continue. All right, so it executed. Let me see if my log is going to show me anything useful. Let me try and find it. And there we go. So this is now the log file. So all the times that we've actually opened it up and it did something, you see here it's right in the log. So here is our first log application is starting and then it's log that it did this, did that, did that. And then here's the one that we just wrote, accessed weather forecast, right? And then it's telling you all of the details of what it's doing and getting and this and that, right? So that's how logging works. That's how Swagger works.